Hello, my name is Catherine Short and I'm the Managing Director of Policy for Educators for Excellence in Los Angeles. And before that, I was a seventh grade English and Social Studies teacher. Today, I want to share with you a brief overview of the past, present, and possible future of our California schools and E4E's campaign to raise school revenue and achievement. We're going to give a brief overview of who E4E is, what we do, and how we do it. Then we'll dive into the question of how we got into this mess, and finally talk about some ways we can make our way out of it. E4E was founded by two classroom teachers who started noticing that policies always seemed to be pushed down on them, with no one asking them for their real in-classroom expertise. So they started talking to colleagues at their own school and across their district and found that they were not alone. Together, they formed this grassroots organization that gives teachers a voice to fight for their biggest passion, their students. The structure of E4E as an organization very much mirrors this journey that every teacher makes as they begin to take one of these leadership roles beyond their classroom. First, we learn. We learn about education research, policy, and news, and we learn from one another. Second, we network. We meet other educators on our own campuses, across our districts, and even across the country to share our stories. We also network with education leaders so that we can bring teacher voice into the decision-making process. And with all this knowledge and all of this collective power, we take action. We advocate on behalf of our students and our profession for policies that elevate teachers and raise student achievement. And this is the piece of our work that has led us to take on the issue we are discussing today, raising school revenue and achievement. But first, let's take a step back to that learning piece. How did we even get into this mess? California has been consistently underspending the rest of the nation in per pupil funding on K-12 education since the early 1980s. As you can see on this chart, that top line is the national average. With the exception of a few years in the 70s, we have been sinking further and further below. Today, we are ranked 47th out of the 50 states in per pupil funding. We get just a little over $5,000 from the state general fund. Taken in combination with other sources, including federal dollars, we get $8,500 per student in California and $10,000 in LAUSD. To put this into perspective, though, New York gets $13,000 from its state for a total of around $17,000 per child. LAUSD is the second largest school district in the country. We can and should be doing better for our kids. But there are three big factors that got us here. First is something called Proposition 13. Prop 13 said that property taxes could never be above 1% of the value of the property. That's really great if you have a big house. Unfortunately, traditionally, our money for schools has come from these property taxes. So limiting them to one sad little percent meant much less money for schools and kids. California is unique in that we now fund our schools out of income and sales taxes. That means that when the economy is good, our schools get more money. But when the economy is bad, our schools and kids bear the brunt. Second, there's this idea of a state of fiscal emergency. In ideal times, California is supposed to pass a balanced budget. We're not supposed to spend more than we take in. We're also not supposed to go way off track of what we say we're gonna spend. So if we say 40% of our money is for schools, 10% for healthcare, et cetera, we're supposed to stick to that. But if we declare a state of fiscal emergency, that means that the governor and the legislature essentially have free reign to pass an imbalanced budget and, importantly for our schools, borrow money from around the budget as needed. California has been in a state of fiscal emergency since the early 2000s, and we have consistently borrowed on the backs of our kids and schools while making exceptions for other programs. Finally, there are the challenges of a direct democracy. In California, you have to get a popular vote to raise taxes. It turns out, people do not like taxing themselves. It has been close to 20 years since California citizens have done an across-the-board raise in taxes for our schools. But that brings us to some potential solutions. For the first time in about 20 years, Californians are seriously considering raising revenue to save our schools. There are actually currently two options on the table, Prop 30 and Prop 38. 
Prop 30 raises about $6 billion in revenues, of which about $2.9 billion would go to education. Prop 38 would raise about $10 billion in revenues, of which about $7 billion would go to education in the first four years, and all of which would go to education thereafter. It's important to note, however, that both propositions are still income and sales taxes, so they both still depend on how the economy is doing. So, who is going to be paying these taxes? Under Prop 30, only those making over $250,000 would pay additional income tax. However, it is also worth noting that the quarter cent sales tax increase would obviously affect everyone, and by their very definition, sales taxes disproportionately affect low-income individuals. Under Prop 38, the idea is that everyone benefits from public education, so everyone chips in. Almost everyone would see some increase in their income tax, so it has a very broad base. Prop 30 would last seven years, with the sales tax lasting for four, and Prop 38 would last 12 years. We should note Prop 30 would bring in money almost immediately, whereas Prop 38 only begins in the 2013-2014 school year. So this is the single biggest question we get on both revenue propositions. Is the money really, really going to go to schools? Under Prop 30, the money does go to the general fund account, where, by law, at least 40% is supposed to go to K-12 and community colleges. The rest would be used for other state programs. Of the money going to education, 89% would be for K-12 and 11% for community colleges. Under Prop 38, there are really two stages to this 12-year law. In the first stage, for the first four years, 30% would go to pay down state debt, which means it could free up money in the general fund for other purposes. The other 70% is sent to a special pot of money that is strictly for education and actually separate from the general fund, 60% for K-12 and 10% for early childhood. In the second stage, all the money goes to that special fund, with 85% for K-12 and 15% for early childhood. So here's the bad news. If both of these propositions fail, we are looking at a dismal state for our public school system. If Prop 30 fails, there will be at least $5.4 billion in trigger cuts to education. These are unprecedented low levels of funding. Economists have been reluctant to even make predictions about what this will do to our economy long term, our future spending on incarceration and health care, because no other state has ever invested so little in their schools. In LAUSD, Dr. Daisy has said there is nothing left to cut. It will mean 15 days off our instructional calendar. The UC and CSU systems will lose $250 million. If Prop 38 fails, our schools will lose out on of billions in revenues and there will be nothing to help offset trigger cuts. But here is the good news. You can vote yes on both. They will not both be implemented and only the one with the most votes will go into effect. Voting for both simply ensures that one will pass and our schools will get the funds they so desperately need. At this moment, both Prop 30 and 38 are vulnerable. For the first time in 20 years, however, they are teetering at 50% in the polls, which is what they need to pass. People are skeptical of giving up their tax dollars if it's just going to fund the status quo. Voters need to hear from dedicated, informed, empowered teachers about the amazing work they do with their students and what that additional revenue can mean for your classroom and our state's whole future. They need to hear from teachers who know things can be better in our schools, but also know that improvement requires investment, and our kids deserve our investment. Our kids don't get to vote, but you do. They need you to be their voice and their champion. At E4E, we have several ways you can get involved. First, you can join our movement by becoming a member and signing our member-based petition to tell Sacramento our schools need funds and they need teachers to be leading the way in deciding where and how those funds are spent. Second, you can join our phone banking party. We'll provide you with training, food, drinks, and good company to call voters and let them know that dedica dedicated teachers like you are joining this fight for our schools and our future. You can also join our door knocking campaign. 
We've got, we'll be going together door to door so that voters can meet the people their decisions affect. Right now, voters see the connection between the propositions and their wallets, but not necessarily the connection between the propositions and their schools. You can help them make that connection. If you're interested in any of these opportunities, please contact Brent Walmsley at the email address listed here, or talk to an E4E member at your school. We would love to have you involved. Thank you for being the voice for your profession and your students.